Hey guys, it is Holy Basil here today with another voiceover, full body workout, doing some overhead press for reps, supersetted with some chin ups. And please forgive me in advance, but I did not realize how sloppy my chin ups were until I watched the footage. So um, there are kind of some partial reps, but I did feel a good lat engagement in it, and I guess that that's a win. But I'll promise to clean those up for you guys next time. Today I want to talk to you guys about an aspect of life that has always been a stumbling block for my walk with God, and that is slavery. And how could a loving God promote one of the worst acts of man that there possibly is? But plot twist, God does not condone slavery, never has, and any time that it has been practiced, it has never been blessed. Uh, there have always been bad results because of it. And if you look at the, the Israelite style and the, the verbiage behind slavery, it was more like a, a servitude. You had a servant, and it was a temporary period in which someone served whether for debt, for future marriage, for just being plain broke, or breaking the law, that Exodus outlines some, some rules and guidelines of treating your, your slave well, and ultimately a lot of the times that they could get freedom and in some cases could choose to be forever a slave. But approaching it from a New Testament mindset, uh, Paul says in Romans 6.22, But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. I personally can attest to feeling like a slave to sin, like having no control that I was always going to feel this way or do these things that were not godly, that were not pure, until Jesus. And that is how we have all been set free, all that believe. And now we can choose to be slaves of God, which is really just a, a new servitude. And the fruit that we get from that is sanctification to be made holy and eternal life. And I don't know of a better deal that I've ever heard of apart from that. And when we proceed into our slavery unto God, he doesn't give us shackles and chains as the enemy does and as the world has done with numerous instances throughout history and races. But what God gives us instead is armor and an arsenal of protecting ourselves and fighting against the enemy. And when I'm telling you when you truly walk in that slavery unto God, it is the most freedom that you can possibly imagine because you're not a slave to all of the ploys of the world of having to live a certain way and look a certain way, but your identity is in Christ and Christ alone. There's a parable I'd like to share with you guys, and it is the story of a slave who is taken to an auction. And at the auction... He is bought by a master, and the slave approaches the master, and he says, Because you bought me, I will never work for you. I will always hate you and resent you, and you will regret having purchased me. And the master says, I bought your freedom. And the slave breaks down and says, Because you bought my freedom, I will be your slave forever. That applies to our own lives as well, because 1 Corinthians 7.23, Paul writes, You were bought with a price. Do not make yourselves bondservants of men. And the price that we were bought with was God's one and only Son, Jesus Christ, the down payment for our sins. Otherwise, we deserve death. We know that Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. God saved us from death. 
And I'm not a Calvinist, so I truly believe that it, salvation is acceptable to all who confess the name of Jesus Christ. And that might be a story or a, or a vlog for another day. But we can choose to daily die to ourselves and put God's desires above our own. And that's the only time that we will have contentment and fulfillment in this life. Because if you continue to serve the world, you'll serve your lust, you'll serve your greed for money, you'll serve success, you'll serve other people, and you'll feel so empty and consumed. Where when we serve God, we have all of the peace, joy, and fulfillment that we could possibly have. Now, if you're one listening to this today and you don't know Jesus, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, then um, I encourage you to. Um, Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I encourage you to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to know that you do not have to be a slave to the world anymore. And for those of you who do, and you have doubts and frustrations, stumbling blocks in your, your faith walk, just like I do, I encourage you to reach out to God and to pray about those things and ask for revelation from the Holy Spirit, and He will guide you, and to study. And sometimes that doubt can really push you into more faith. Uh, but appreciate y'all listening, sticking around trying to gain some mass over these next few months, and I really push my training. Love you guys.